What influence did B-movies have on the band? <laughs> How many tapes do you have? How many loads have you got? It started out as a band that was covering bad songs from bad movies. I mean, they should be looked at as a legacy of Los Angeles. They lived the movie lifestyle. I had seen many of Dookie's movies long before I knew who he was. I first saw Dookie Flyswatter in a Green Jello video. Because as soon as I saw him up on the stage, I go, oh, fuck, that's that guy from Surf Nazis. Roger Ebert said it's the worst movie he's ever seen. They were such a part of our scene. You know, a movie, a cult movie that's got its own fans, we've attracted our own fans and our own family. Within a city of misfits like Hollywood, we were misfits. He's an icon of the underground exploitational genre. Punk rock god of Hollywood. It was neat to see the same faces always orbiting this universe that Dookie Flyswatter seemed to be in the center of. There was celebrities, weird people, cool people, interesting people. Axel and Sass came to see us and I slimed them really good. Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. Tom Waits was there. I remember Fishbone showing up at a couple of gigs. Kirk Lab was afraid of us. When you're sitting between Dookie and Elvira, it doesn't get any cooler than that. Spike Lee wasn't impressed. Just about to go on stage and Lee grabs my shoulder. White Zombie and Haunted Garage and Tool were all on the same bill. I think Soundgarden was opening for you. I would not be surprised. I did a nude painting. Clive Barker owns that painting. Los Angeles seems to be a haven for insularly popular artist situation. You can destroy here. And no, and nobody knows where you are. It's crazy. We'd like to be an A movie someday. <laughs> a B A movie. An A B movie. Oh, yeah. A B A movie. A B A movie. <laughs> <laughs>